Breakups can be icky and feel like an emotional whirlwind filled with uncertainty, doubt, fear, and heartache. But they can also be filled with growth, self-discovery, and newness. While navigating my most recent breakup, I realized just how resilient I am, how graceful I can be with myself, and most importantly for me, the power of finding solace in self-care in every single way. Today, we're diving into navigating breakups with a special guest, Noelle Weber, who also recently went through a breakup and was willing to walk us through her thoughts, feelings, and more importantly, what she did to self-soothe, heal, and move forward. What is going on, beautiful people? You are listening to the Affirmations for Black Girls podcast. We focus on personal growth and cultivating a healthy relationship with ourselves. I'm your host, Ty, the creative actress, content creator, and mental health enthusiast. And you guys, I'm super excited because today we have a phenomenal guest. We have the one and only Noelle Weber. Hello, girl. How are you? Hey, girl. I am great. How are you doing? I am doing amazing. I am so excited that you said, yes, I want to be on the podcast because when I asked you, I was just like, oh my gosh, I hope she wants to come and talk about navigating a breakup. And I'm just super excited to dive in and really just have some girl time and talk about breakups, love, everything in the relationship world. But before we do, we have to do our affirmation of the week. Are you ready? This week's affirmation is I am whole and I am complete all on my own. I am whole and I am complete on my own. I am whole and I am complete on my own. I am whole and I am complete on my own. I am whole and I am complete on my own. I am whole and I am complete on my own. I, first of all, that was so, so good. And I think this is definitely the perfect affirmation for today's episode because I don't know about you, but especially growing up in the South and learning what I know or what I grew up learning about love, you feel like you need somebody to complete you. You are not whole without this person. So that Mm -hmm. affirmation, just having that to reassure yourself that you are whole, you are complete on your own. is just, it just pulled at my heartstrings. Yes. I mean, I can, I have the same sentiment. You know, I think even in society as women, if you don't have someone, um, people will use that against you as a negative thing. And people forget that the love that you are seeking is already within you. You just have to search for it. You have to find it. You have to cultivate it. You have to nurture it. Um, It's like filling up your own cup. And the more you fill up your own cup, the more you'll be able to pour into others. Um, And that's something that I'm definitely still on the journey of Mm -hmm. in my healing stages. But it feels so good when you do feel like, man, I am whole just within myself. And to have someone else is just a nice compliment to that. And when you have two people who do feel whole, then you are just set up for success, especially when you go forward in a relationship. So, yeah, that that affirmation is just something that I will definitely continue to like say to myself, continue to think about and continue to, to work towards. I love that you said compliment someone who Mm -hmm. compliments you. Um, and that just like we've been saying, like we literally feel like we need somebody to complete us and a relationship is a partnership. 
it's a team, just like a basketball team. Everybody compliments each other. Nobody has the exact same role. Like we are literally looking for someone who compliments us, who brings out the best in us, the stuff that's already mm-hmm. in there, who brings those things to the surface. I love that you said that. Yeah, I, I actually have this really uh interesting saying. I say I want someone that compliments me, my life, but doesn't complicate it. You know. You about to have me right? screaming already on the podcast, okay? Yes, <laughs> I love that. I love that. Someone who compliments it, but don't complicate it. Amen. Yeah, because, you know, you just, <laughs> you want someone that, like, you don't have to take, like, change yourself for, and they don't have to change themselves for you. And even though there are times where you're still in the healing process, if you're willing to be empathetic, willing to listen, willing to understand that we are two separate individuals, but we're coming together to grow together and work towards that. That's exactly what I'm looking for going forward in a relationship, you know, Um, just navigating this whole experience and like love and finding love. It's like, it has different nuances, different um, hurdles you have to get over, but it's such a beautiful experience. I'll be like, man, this is life. Like I'm just enjoying every moment of it. Yeah. The good and the bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I had an icebreaker, but I don't even know if we need to do an icebreaker for real. <laughs> what kind of icebreaker was it? Is it it's, a actually, fun one? It's, it's fun, I guess, but it's actually a little hard. And then, and that's why I'm like, I don't even know. Cause I don't even think I can do it. Let me just tell you what it is. So I okay. wanted to do an icebreaker. I wanted to do word association, but we have to do word association to breakup songs. So you have to say a word and then the first breakup song that comes to your mind, you have to sing it. But that's hard because I don't know no breakup songs. I know. I was like, I don't know any breakup songs. I'm trying to think of. I mean, there's a few. And you know what's crazy when you start th- listening to songs as an adult, when you listen to them as a kid, mm-hmm. and you're like, wait, wait, it's yep. about breaking up. Like, exactly. I could have sworn, you know, like, hey, y'all from like Outcast. That's a that breakup is song. Not- yeah. Yes. He's telling this girl, like, <laughs> we are not supposed to be together. And like, you're over here shaking it like a salt shaker. Exactly. And he's telling this girl, like, hit the road. Like, I'm sorry. Like, listen to it, Tyra. When you get off, listen to that song. Really listen to it. Or even just pull up the lyrics. You'll see. See? Mm-hmm. Okay, let's let's just play a couple of rounds then. Let's see okay. if we can we can do, if we can make it do what it do. Okay. Um, okay. okay. So we'll each give two words. Uh, you go first. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, um, goodbye. And you said Wait, two, right? Yeah, but one at a time. Uh, okay. Goodbye. I feel like that would be in a breakup song. <laughs> <laughs> no, it definitely would. Uh, goodbye. So long. Farewell to you, my friend. Hey, goodbye <laughs> for now until we meet again. That was good. That okay. was good. <laughs> yeah, that was, look, you could use it good. I'm now scared now because it's my <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, talk. Mm. Oh my gosh, talk. <laughs> I'm blinking out. Oh my gosh. I'm not good at this game. Uh, I don't know why talk uh, came to my head. Can we talk? Wait. No. I was like, can I talk to you? But that's not even a break of song. <laughs> well, yeah. Th- and what, what you just reminded me of was, can we talk oh, for oh, a minute? But that's minute. not a break of song. <laughs> He's trying to talk to this girl. Yeah. We are we- not doing a good job. We're not, but we at least we got the sentiment. At least right. we were trying. We were trying. We yeah. tried it. Yeah. Let's let's go one more round. Let's try again. Let's try to redeem ourselves. Okay. Jesus, I did the out of the box theme. This is crazy. Okay. How about leave? 
I'm leaving, never to come back again. <laughs> yeah, new man. This <laughs> is <laughs> so sad. Yeah, yeah, I like she that fly, one. She fly and I'm leaving. I don't know all the words, but yes, there we go. That was that's a good one. You're that's a tired. Song, You're good right? at this game. Yes, you're good at this game. <laughs> thank you this thank is your you. game thank this you is your this game. is my game okay <laughs> let's see I don't, it's hard to pick a word um sorry this is my sorry for <gasps> 2004 and I'm no, 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 no in this year uh, right, Ruben Stutter, right? Yep. What the hell? What, what's your American <laughs> Idol? Where he at? <laughs> That's a good yeah. one. Thank that you. I just pulled that right out of here. <laughs> out of right here. <laughs> that one was really, really good. Oh my gosh, that was so fun. Now I want to keep going. But yeah. We got stuff. We got stuff to talk about. Okay. Yes. That was fun. That was really fun. Mm -hmm. So breakups can trigger feelings of guilt, shame, and self-blame. And it is very important that I, I've learned that it's very important to learn to forgive ourselves and, or not even just ourselves, but forgive in general and let go, let go of the anger, the hurt, all of those heavy feelings that we tend to start harboring after a breakup. And most importantly, learn how to let go of the past. So my first question is, how did you navigate the process of releasing the emotional baggage from your last relationship? Yeah, that- uh, We jumping in. We jumping in and that's okay. <laughs> Let's go oh, yeah. to the deep end. Um, <laughs> man, emotions for me, I'm just gonna start off by saying, I had to learn that there is more, there are different types of emotions besides being angry, being happy and being sad. Yep. There's a rainbow of them. And sometimes when I would feel a certain feeling, I would just go straight to anger. And so I had to learn first to even identify what those emotions that I were feeling first in order to even let them go. Cause I have to understand them. And it took me some time to really like think on how to handle those. Um, I've always been like a private person and being vulnerable and being open was something that just didn't make me feel good mm -hmm. because it just made me feel very exposed. And so to even start having conversation or feeling comfortable, I, I seeked out a therapist, mm -hmm. someone that was unbiased, didn't really know me besides, you know, the interaction I would have with her every other week. Um, and just start talking about like, just how I was feeling and for her to help me navigate what those emotions may be. You might be like, you know, they did this and this and you're like, I'm angry about it. And they're like, well, are you really angry? Or maybe you're just feeling a little insecure or you're feeling a little jealous. And within that like practice and building that muscle of being able to identify my emotions, I was able to start really understanding like what happened why I felt like that and how I can move forward. So that was number one, just even identifying my emotions. And then also just leaning into like some of my family and friends, like mm -hmm. close family and friends and talking with them and like kind of getting their point of view because I think we've all dealt with some type of heartbreak some way or another. And, you know, talking to my mom has been like a huge, it's a huge step for me. Mm -hmm. Not only did it like bring us closer but it helped me just kind of understand like who she was as a person. And she was able to tell me a lot of the things that she went through. And I don't know, I just, I just had to kind of replay like things that happened in my past and actually like face them instead of running away from them, instead of saying, Oh, that didn't happen and pushing it under or suppressing it. I, I allowed myself to feel them. I allowed myself to really like understand, Oh, wow. When I went through this particular situation, this is the feeling I had in my gut or that little knot in my throat that I would get. And I want to work my way through that and, and really identify it and actually just sit there. And if I had to like cry, I would just sit on my couch and just cry it out um, and just feel it all. Uh, you know, this last breakup that I went through was one of the hardest breakups I've ever, ever had in my whole life. You know, mm -hmm. like a little context, you know, I'll, 
I lived with this person for about a year. I know I've known them for almost two and a half years and I've actually only been in LA for three. So I've oh, known wow. the majority of my mm -hmm. time out here. So a lot of my identity, the last two and a half years was wrapped up in this one person. And so a part of me didn't understand what it would be without them. And I had to finally accept that and actually accept just my already emotional state of where I was at. And I had to just, you know, try to find ways to just like slowly, you know, I didn't pull that bandaid off. I kind of yeah. like inched it off, you know, cause mm -hmm. it had a little few hairs on it. You yeah. know, that's, that stuff hurts. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's inch it off little by little. Um, and just really think I, a little more logically than just like my feelings, you know, cause like when you love someone, you get so blinded about yep. like all the beautiful things that they are, all the moments and memories that you had together. And sometimes I, I felt that I was like stuck in those moments, you know, like oh, remember we used to cook dinner together and we used to walk my dog together. We took vacations and he met my mom and I met his and then you just, you know, miss them so much. You're like, I want to get back into that situation. But I had to remind myself, wait, <laughs> remember when you felt that one night when they did such and such? Remember that week when you couldn't even go out the house because you were so sad and you were mm -hmm. with that person? Or those moments where you felt alone and lonely, but you had you were living with this person. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to like really take a timeline and think back on each step of those of those uh, of that two years that I was with this person. And what's crazy is that I actually started creating like a notes, like in my little apps in my phone, in the notes section, I would write down everything that he would do to me. I started taking, not a tally, but writing it down so I wouldn't forget. Yeah. And or I know that may sound- it Or push it to the side or what, all the things we do in relationship, mm -hmm. yeah. I started writing them down. And I know it kind of sounds a little crazy, but for me, as someone that loves to look at the like the good parts of a person, I had to remember the parts that I knew that didn't align with what I wanted in a partner. Mm -hmm. um, so I know I probably went on a tangent from that question, but these are a lot of the things I did to kind of work through some of those emotions from the breakup because, you know, there's no blueprint on it. I mean, we have so many self-help books, but, you know, you do what works for you. You do what helps you get through it. Um and I, I mean, I'm still working through it. I'm mm -hmm. still healing from this whole situation, even though, you know, I broke up with this person a while ago, it finally came to a, actually a close pretty recently, like a complete close where I'm like no longer in communication with them. I'm no longer spending time with them anymore. I'm no longer, you know, reaching out to check on them or even seeing what they're doing. So I, I think this is like the part now where it's like, you, I'm really in it, in it. Yeah. And I, it's, it's, it's a every day, every day I, I, I choose to work through. I, I'm, I think about things less, right? Less and less. I'm starting to like, okay, forgive those parts of myself that I know didn't, you know, handle certain situations in that relationship correctly. I'm also forgiving them for some of the things that they have done for me, but it's a day by day type of uh, situation for me it's it's not easy let me just yeah. say I have nights where like I will literally just be up thinking about it till like two in the morning but then there's nights where I'm like sleep like a little baby mm -hmm. and I'm like snoring you know because I'm like I'm good I there's so much to to unpack here uh we have a lot of similarities um uh, when I moved out to LA I had a boyfriend and mm -hmm. when I moved out here we had only been together for a couple of months we moved in together um, and we ended up being together for five years of my life wow. and, or like four, closer to like four ish, you know, four and some change. And a lot of my, most of my identity was wrapped up in him because I didn't know nobody in LA. We moved out here together. We're a team, mm -hmm. you know, at the root of it all, you're the only person in LA that I quote unquote trust because we came here together, we built whatever we had from the ground up. And I think that was one of the biggest things that made it hard for me to leave because so much of myself had been wrapped up in our world versus Tyra's world. I really lost a lot of my individuality. And I think that's something that in the, in the future, or even in my, I've had one relationship since then, 
that has also recently ended. It's coming up on a year oh, of that relationship. I'm so sorry ended. to hear that. Girl, and we're gonna we gonna talk about it. But um <laughs> <laughs> I I really said to myself, one thing that I cannot do is lose my individuality because I know for me, especially in breakup or in re- in relationship when I know that we need to separate that is the biggest thing for me I fully immerse myself into the relationship in a way that can almost become codependent I have codependent tendencies and I'm so grateful that I am self-aware of that because once I became aware of that I was able to work on that I was able to make sure that I was still having my own friends my own routines my own hobbies my own life outside of who Tyra is in this relationship. So I feel you when you say like most of your time you were with this person in LA, especially a new place. Like we're not from Mm -hmm. here. First and foremost, you Mm -hmm. want comfort. And one of the quote unquote easiest way to find comfort is in a relationship. So I totally feel that. Yes. And my old habits would be like, if you are to get over someone, you get underneath somebody. Have you heard that? Yep. You already know. Yes. It's crazy because when I met my ex, I actually was only like single for about a month because I was oh, wow. talking to somebody from like when I where I used to live. We were still kind of like figuring things out long distance and it like just kind of ended. And I was like, OK, I'm out here in a new city. I'm going to like just be with myself, yeah. find friends and things like that. And so I feel the same way, like this, like how you were talking about how your ex was like the person that you trusted, the person that you went to, like. That's like your, I mean, they consider your best friend, you know? And so to have to now part ways from someone that like really knows who you are and you, and you felt the most safe with at one point, Mm -hmm. it's really hard to navigate that. And I'm someone that when I'm with a man, I'm like, my man, my man, my man, my man. Yeah. Yeah. And and so I feel bad sometimes because of the, the friendship that I did have prior to getting my relationship they kind of took a hit, you know, they, I didn't cultivate them. I didn't nourish them or nurture them as, as I could have. Mm -hmm. Um, And luckily I have some really solid people who understood what I was going through. But man, when I tell you sometimes as women, we get so wrapped up sometimes in these relationships that we forget our, our, our identity outside of that relationship And so like the things that we like to do that we did before getting that relationship, the people we were around, sometimes we cut that off so that we can Mm -hmm. make sure that we are present for that relationship. And sometimes it's a disservice because when you do break up, you're like, who am I? Yep. Like what, who, like, who am I again? And you have to like now reconnect with yourself again. And so just like you, if I ever get into another relationship and I know I will eventually, I want to make sure that I continue to like hone in on these new skills that I'm developing and that I'm Mm -hmm. being very aware of doing and I'm conscious of. And, you know, they say, if you do the same thing over and over and over again, expecting the different results, it's insanity. insanity. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing that for, I'm not gonna say my age, but I've been doing (laughs) it for a while and I'm tired. A girl's tired. I need something new in my life. So I'm right there with you. And again, I'm so sorry that you're going through that, but we going in it together. We okay, are. I see we you. Definitely are. I see you. Yes. And I see you. I see you too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, okay. So with therapy, was this your first time seeking therapy? Uh tell me a little bit a little bit more about your process with, with therapy. Man, therapy. <laughs> Therapy used to be very like taboo for me. Yeah, I think also in just in the black household, yep. you know, y- y- you go to see God first and, you know, pray on it. And I prayed on it, but, you know, there's something about praying. And then there's also something about really like figuring out like some things that clinically I need to address. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of scared to go to a therapist because I was like, does that mean that I'm like, not all there? Like what's going on with that? But mm-hmm. I had to just open my mind to it. And the funny thing is when I first actually moved in with my ex, before I even found a therapist for myself, we actually found a therapist for each other, like to go together. Yeah. And we went a few sessions and that didn't go very well because my partner did not want to go anymore. And Mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, but I actually liked that I was able to talk freely with this person. So I sought therapy just by myself. 
And when I tell you, it completely changed how I move around this world now. Um, because when I created it, it's a safe space for me to feel comfortable really exposing myself where I can sit there and she'll let me just cry for 30 minutes talking about whatever. And I think it's nice to have an outlet. Not everyone has the ability to have someone that they feel completely safe with. Um, especially, you know, I, a lot of my closer friends, they don't live here anymore. So, mm -hmm. you know, having a phone call here and there, but we're all going through things. And I felt like if I'm like dumping on you and you already have things going on, it just didn't feel good. Mm -hmm. And so that go to someone, one that's being paid. I mean, I'm paying them, okay. but essentially they are, you know, well-versed into helping me navigate. Like I mentioned before, like my emotions and maybe like giving me some advice or just a different perspective to think on. Um, it really helped me. It's, it's made me as strong of a woman that I woman I am now because of that because I said, you know what, I need help. And not just for my relationship, just for my mental health in general, you know, like we just got out of a whole pandemic yeah, and we're still dealing with like the aftermath of that and all the chaos that's going on in the world. Like my, your mental health is so important. And I encourage everyone to try to seek, seek out. And I know they're not the most uh, cost effective, you know, they're kind of expensive here and there. And our healthcare doesn't really provide the means to allow everyone to have one. But if you have the opportunity, I would say seek out. There's also free therapy yeah. sessions too at some of these places, but try to talk to someone because like suppressing those emotions just build up and build up and build up. And, you know, you'll be surprised at the very uncool things you can do when you are building up those emotions. You know, they can come mm -hmm. out in different ways, whether it's like, you know, using recreational things that you shouldn't yeah. be using or acting out. So therapy really has like, it's molded me mm -hmm. into more of a, of a person that can actually walk into this world and feel like I'm contributing to society in a healthy way. And I'm also able to walk around knowing that I have a, a better handle on myself and I have a better connection with myself. Girl, if you keep letting me talk, I'm gonna keep talking. <laughs> I was about to say, um, I, and, and that's the thing, like still to this day, a lot of people in my family feel that way about therapy. I've been going to therapy since 2019. I finally said, okay, enough is enough. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of feeling the way that I feel. Point blank period. Yeah. And so I sought therapy. A lot of people, two things. A lot of people think of therapy as you have to sit on a couch and talk directly to a person. Therapy in itself, the act of therapy is release. You know, there's different types of therapy. There's art therapy, music therapy. There is mm. the, the more traditional therapy, but therapy can look a lot of different ways. And I don't think people um realize that it doesn't have to be that oh my gosh something is wrong with me because I'm going to talk to someone therapy can be a lot of stuff and on the flip side of that there's still a lot of people in my family who don't want to go to therapy because if you are truly going to therapy uh, uh more of the traditional therapy talking to a, a therapist or a psychologist or whatever you have to be vulnerable and you have to be in a space where you can allow yourself to be vulnerable. I know when I was in my relationship, when I moved out to Los Angeles, one of the hardest things for me was to be vulnerable. I started to realize just how much stress that put on our relationship mm. because I wasn't able to talk about my feelings. If you hurt me, I'm mad. That's it. I, I mm -hmm. resulted straight to anger. I did not want to be vulnerable. Anger and happiness were the two emotions that I could get to quickly without feeling naked, without feeling seen. And I mm -hmm. liked to live in that. But therapy will take you to a place where you just learn how to express yourself in a vulnerable way. And you have to work up to that. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be full of discomfort, but 
on the other side of that is freedom. So if there is anybody out there listening to the podcast, there are a lot of resources. You guys know I talk about BetterHelp all the time on the podcast. Mm -hmm. There's all there's even Alma, which is another uh, online therapy platform. There are free resources. There are resources out there. Sometimes they are hard to find, but there is something out there, whether it's virtual or in person. There's there's just about something for everybody. I suggest you definitely give it a try. The thing that I like to say about therapy, whether you're going through a breakup or anything tumultuous in your life, any type of chaos, whatever that means to you is therapy is just like working out it's just like going to the gym and getting on the treadmill jump jumping rope doing some sit-ups like Mm -hmm. it's literally going to the gym for your mental health and once I started to think about it that way I never saw it as oh something wrong with me or I gotta fix this no I'm going to get my workout in Mm -hmm. and that's it I love that. <laughs> and I love that you mentioned that there's other forms of therapy. And I know you yeah. mentioned like art and stuff, something that I've been doing. And even I know it's not considered therapy, but I, I like to try meditation as well mm-hmm. and going to yoga. There's also like, have you heard of Reiki? When they yes. like find those places, there mm-hmm. is like attached to my therapist. She recommended me to this young lady who does this type of like body healing, where she like finds places of your body that um, is storing a lot of trauma. Um, I know people don't think about it, but we hold a lot of trauma and it affects us. It affects mm-hmm. us in like our health, in our nervous system. And we hold a lot in our body um, from like our childhood up. And so it's important also to like work out, work out those parts in your body that can like get it out yeah. that you've been storing, not just verbally, yep. but physically, like going to the gym or stretching, mm-hmm. like there's some stretches I've deep breathing yes (laughs) yes to kind of release those feelings and um I'm glad that you mentioned that because it's not just like a one way fits everyone you know it's you have to find what really works and resonates with you and if it doesn't work you can find other avenues and then Mm -hmm. hopefully you find something that like helps you get through your feelings and identifying it and hopefully like helps you like release a lot of the the trauma that you've built on throughout these years because like let me just tell you we've been through a lot (laughs) yeah there's actually this book and I have to read it but it's called the body keeps score and Mm. it literally talks about how what you're saying right now how we hold in all of this trauma all of this hurt all of this stress and um, I've talked about this on the podcast before but long story short I have terrible in-flight anxiety and it got to the point where it was so bad to where when I even knew that I was about to book my flight I would immediately get sick and I would feel like I had been hit by a Mack truck like I wouldn't be able to move my neck and my back would be hurting so much and I'm like what is going on baby that's stress that's anxiety Mm -hmm. that's nerves that's nervousness and literally what helped me back then that was back in 20 that was in 2019 too when I realized like okay I have to figure out what's going on that's when Mm -hmm. I started to take meditation more seriously back then I was using the Headspace app but now and I talk about this like literally every episode now I use the Calm app I absolutely Mm -hmm. love it it has all types of guided meditations or self-guided meditations um and just a lot of stuff to help you release. Like, cause at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Releasing, letting go of all of this stuff that we we hold on to these things because we know that this has happened to us. We know that th- this is real and we mm-hmm. don't want to let it go because we fear that if we let it go, it didn't happen or it wasn't real or I didn't have to feel this way. And that's just simply not the case release all of that because we don't need it. And it's not serving us all that hot air. We don't need that. Not, <laughs> not as, not and as once you air. release it, you make room for the beautiful abundance that is waiting for you. Like, yeah. I think for people forget this universe, this world isn't to hurt you. It's mm-hmm. to give you all the beautiful things. If you allow it, mm-hmm. you know, we hold on to so much of the trauma, so much of the hurt. And, and it's because we don't know what's ahead of us. That's scary. Like not knowing what's going to happen. We can only know what's what's happened. So we hold, like you said, we hold on to it because we yeah. already know we can predict it. 
We can't yeah. predict our future. Yep. So people get comfortable in knowing stuff, you know, and fear is, fear can take a hold of your life. It yep. really can. And I'm, I'm speaking from experience where you're so fearful of like the next step or the risks that you can take that you're like, well, I don't know what that is. So I'm just going to stick to what I know. Cause that makes me feel more comfortable yet. There's such a beautiful experience waiting for you, but it's not going to come to you because you don't have enough room to let it in. So y'all get this therapy, get go, please do what you got to do. This is a beautiful world that we're living in a beautiful life. And you, you want to just enjoy every moment, you know, that's how I'll be thinking about it. I'm like, you know what, let me just log in and talk to this lady real quick <laughs> and get it, get it done. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> yes. Okay, so in the Instagram reel that I saw that you posted, you touched on self-care, which we have been talking about forever on the podcast. And in February, our theme is loving on you. So this is right on time for uh, our listeners. Can you share a specific self-care practice or routine that has significantly contributed to your healing journey after your breakup? And- in all of that, how are you dating you these days? Uh, well, the first, <laughs> for the first part of how I practice self-care with myself, is that what the question was? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, some things that are contributing to your healing process that you're like, oh yeah, this is working wonders for me. I'm keeping every promise to myself that I make. Ooh. And when I tell you that has been a game changer, we forget that we are just as important to love on. Yeah. I saw this really interesting post. I don't know if it was TikTok or Instagram where someone was like, if you're able to switch places with someone that you absolutely love, right? For a year, like if you're in their body, how would you take care of them? And I thought about my mom and I'm like, I love her like to the end of me. How would I take care of her body for a year? And then think about yourself. Do you do that for yourself? And I'm like, wow, I don't. Like if I was in my mom's body, I would be, you know, eating correctly and, you know, taking care of my skin and my hair and my nails and doing all of that just to like enjoy this temple. But when I'm in my own body, I don't do that. You know, I'm out here eating whatever, or I'm like, oh, I don't need to do that. I don't need to go to the gym or I don't need to like do that when I'm like, wait, why am I not doing that? So I told myself every promise that I'm going to make to myself, I'm going to keep. If I say I'm going to like go to bed at a certain time, I'm going to do it. If I say that I'm going to start working out three or four times a week, I'm going to get up and go do it because I made that promise to myself. I'm able to like show up for work. I make every Zoom meeting on time, but I mm -hmm. can't go to bed at a decent hour, you know, or I said, I'm going to like clean up my home create yeah. a, a nice space but there are moments where I would be like no this show's on let me just wait why yeah and we forget you we forget that like life is not permanent you know I can't procrastinate and keep waiting like I'll do it tomorrow I, I don't know if tomorrow's gonna come and I know that sounds a little morbid but when you think of like I need to enjoy and savor every moment with myself I'm gonna keep those promises so also align with like what you say how I date myself Man, I love going to the movies by myself. I Girl, will same. go see. I don't got to talk to nobody. <laughs> I get my little spot. And there's a movie theater right down the street from me. So I'm yes. like, I, anytime a new movie comes out, I'm taking myself to go see a new movie. Mm -hmm. um, I like to go on little dinner dates with myself too. Like I'll find a cool restaurant that I've been waiting to try and I'll just book a reservation. And it feels so good to not have to be like, Hey friends or hey so and so. Yes. Do you like this place and go back and forth when I'm like, no, I want to eat here. I want to yeah. order whatever I want to order. Um, and then also I'm just like nourishing my body from the inside out. I think that's kind of dating myself because I want to mm -hmm. be here as long as possible. Amen. So I've been like really learning more about like my nutrition, um, the supplements I need to take, things like that. Um and just really treating me as I would, again, if I was in a different body of someone I loved, how I would treat this body, because this is our temple. This is important. Yeah. This is, you know, we are with this every day of our lives, every second of our lives. And if I'm able to like 
treat others outside of me so kind and so loving why don't I do it for myself so yeah those are the things that I do and I know there's other things that I probably do that I'm not thinking of oh I also like to try new things too like I somehow started getting into ceramics when I first moved out here that's what all the girls are doing I, we are so, we're like we really are <laughs> like I I have a membership at a pottery studio and I've had it for a year now i.e that's when our, my Isn't breakup it so happened fun? it's so fun and I absolutely love it and it's never going anywhere but yes no. I think to and I just cut you off but to it's okay I think the biggest thing um for me in the self-care space especially not just because of a breakup but also because I'm getting older, I'm about to turn 30 this year. I mm-hmm. am slowly finding joy in the things I found joy in as a child again. Mm-hmm. And I think that is something that is definitely making me enjoy life a lot more because we get into when we especially living in LA like we get into this mindset of hustle 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 we have to make sure that we eat we have to make sure that we have our bills paid all of this type of stuff and sometimes our hobbies fall to the wayside or or, or the things that bring that childlike joy fall to the wayside and after my last breakup that's when i started to subconsciously fall back into that stuff and then i realized oh I did have a pottery wheel when I was eight years old and I freaking loved it. And that same (laughs) joy. And and that's what like, that was the, um, the point where I was like, oh shoot, I felt this once. When was that? When I was seven, eight years old. And I started to piece the puzzles together. Like, oh my gosh, these are feelings that I haven't felt in this way. That childlike joy since I was 10 years old. And I, finding things that bring that back to me have put a new battery Mm -hmm. in my back and I found a new perspective on happiness and you know this goes back to what you said I want someone who compliments that and not complicates it um that joy and those feelings they are at the forefront of my life now and it's been through this um this journey of self-care after a breakup for me and you're definitely healing your inner child because yes. that baby little Tyra in there mm-hmm. is like, oh, I'm slapping that clay yes. there. That's my favorite part is slapping it <laughs> <Yeah>. down. <laughs> and then to see like this big old blob of clay turn into something. And you're like, man, I accomplished this. I, I focus. I put my energy into this. It's therapeutic. You're not mm-hmm. worried about the outside world. You know, I do a lot of hiking too. I like to get back to like the nature and like yeah. watch water and like you said, doing things that like even that I probably didn't get to do when I was a kid or buy stuff. Oh my yeah. goodness. When I tell you, I'm still trying to get these jelly sandals for the summer. Remember those little jelly sandals oh, with the heel yeah. on them? I never had to... any of those. Oh, I always yes. wanted them as a kid. It's like <laughs> just now that we're adults, we can do that because we have adult money. But like you said, is this doing things that just kind of feel, fuel you and fill you up that you, you know, can find that's like your special thing. Um, Something that I've been wanting to do is like indoor um, rock Rock climbing. climbing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I found a a place that does that nearby and I want to start doing that. I also want to get into maybe doing like some like aerial stuff. Yeah. Because it looks really cool. But it's like just finding things that just keeps me like entertained and busy, but also like I can do it with myself. I don't have to worry about reaching out to anyone and I don't have to ask, Hey, is this, is just go and do it. And it could be scary. I'm not going to lie. The first time I went to dinner by myself, I felt like everyone's staring at me that I'm like by myself. Maybe they think my date put me up or maybe they yeah. think I'm like a loser that doesn't have any friends, but then you have to be like, uh, who cares what they think? You know, yeah. I'm here to have a good time by myself. I'm going to tune everyone out. And then I started actually not even being on my phone. Sometimes I would bring a book. Mm-hmm. and I'd be like I'm just gonna sit here and read while I eat my dinner I get to take my time and like savor every moment I don't have to talk to anyone it's a beautiful thing when you are going back to just really enjoying your own company it is enjoying your own company is a beautiful thing and to be quite honest 
you have to really cherish those moments because it's not forever. I mean, if you get into a relationship, if you eventually have children and a family and things like that, you know, you can't take, you, you take, take it for granted. Now you may not have those opportunities sometimes then, you know, talking yep. to some of my friends who are mothers or spouse, they have spouses. It's kind of hard to find their time for mm -hmm. themselves. So I'm really taking advantage of this time really by myself. And it's also helping me get to know me. Yeah. Like we forget, like we are human being and sometimes we don't really know ourselves truly. Yep. Like most of the time every, we don't. We don't because we don't really make time for that. We make time for everything else because it's like, okay, I have to be here for a certain time. I have to show up for here, but like I'm showing up for myself and I'm getting to know the things that I like. I dislike the things yeah. that bring me joy, the things that I know that I need to work on, mm -hmm. the things that I'm finding that like, well, it's been mm -mm, years and you still haven't gone over this hump. Mm -hmm. um, and it's helping me stay focused on a lot of the goals that I have set for myself. It's, 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 it's helping me practice more discipline mm -hmm. in my life and you know, dating myself doesn't like it doesn't necessarily mean you just have to go to dinner or a movie, but it, it's it's dating. It's like figuring out who this person is, connecting yep. with this person. And I think my journey and my mission is to connect this vessel to my spirit. Yeah. And to like build my relationship more with God in the universe. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, one thing that you when you brought up rock climbing, we don't typically pick up new hobbies and new new challenges in that way at mm -hmm. this age and one thing about doing pottery and I, I also box I box six days a week now what? one thing girl yes I'm a boxer <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> but one thing that I have realized is that those things those extracurriculars if you will we did mm -hmm. those when we when we were a child but somewhere along the way we we stopped doing that but that is the stuff that helps you stop feeling alone that is the stuff where you learn things about yourself where different mm -hmm. parts of yourself show where different parts of your character are able to be molded like that is that is what we should be doing. And a lot of times all we do is work and go home and, and think about when is my husband coming or, oh my gosh, I need to make sure that I look good or go to this place so I can see this man and all of those things. I think making sure that we are making time for our new hobbies or trying something new, like you said, like all of that stuff will lead us exactly to where we're trying to go. And a lot of our end goal is marriage kids all of that type of stuff but like you said like this time is so precious and if you think about it it is the shortest time of your life this alone time mm -hmm. that you have as an adult to still learn who you are and have the bandwidth to do crazy things because you have adult yeah. money to do the crazy things this time is short and it is it is very important that we we really dive deep into it and go after whatever it is we want to do wholeheartedly and stop worrying about who coming with you because the people who's supposed to be there will be there when they are supposed to be there and if they ain't there right now that means you're supposed to do it with whoever is around and if that's exactly. just you it's just supposed to be you and that is a hard concept for people to follow people really don't like being alone with their thoughts with themselves mm -hmm. like if people a lot of people if they're sitting at a bus stop at a restaurant, they are in their phone because sitting with your thoughts is uncomfortable, you know, especially in this, in this digital age. And I just want to emphasize this time is short. It is so short. Even if it feel long while you in, in the middle of it, it is so short. It's so, it so is. Short. Yeah. And, and, we, and, you know, we have to take advantage of those. And I think traveling is also another thing that I've been doing a lot more, even solo traveling. Mm -hmm. I recently, last year, we did my first solo travel trip to Mexico. I love that. Oh my gosh. It was so great. Have you, have you traveled solo? solo out of the country? No, I have not traveled solo, okay. but it's on my bucket list, but I am terrified. I'm not just terrified because here's the thing. I'm not scared to go <laughs> to an English speaking country. 
by myself mm-hmm. but anywhere who does not speak english i am a little scared not even gonna lie but that's on my bucket list for this year to do because i'm I'm and, done being scared and letting my fear run my life like no that's not happening because you never know you might meet the love of your life out there you might. You might, like and like you said it's like these new experiences takes a part of us outside of what we're normally used to mm-hmm. and it opens us up opens us up to a new version of ourselves yeah. because we are taking a risk we are instead of leading with fear we're leaving with like love and there's more out there and you know I I, I really want to try as many new things like I'm someone that has worked a million different jobs because I like mm-hmm. to learn mm-hmm. like I've had so many careers and people are always like you've done everything I'm like I have and I have to think back and I like reminisce I'm like I have done so many things it's because I like to learn new things. And once I'm like, okay, I'm good here. I'll find something else. And yeah. so finding new hobbies has been like something that's important to me, but also, like you said, going back to things that we did as a child, like I used to play saxophone as a kid. Like I played Ooh. for, I did. I played from like eight years old up until that's like dope. college. That is and dope. I, thanks. And, but there was a time where I just put it away and I never touched it. And now like I'm bringing it back out, I'm playing. And then it gives me like this feeling of just like, this nostalgic feeling yeah. that we used to have. Remember growing up without having to be worried about social media? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. it's good to go back to that when we are such in a digital age where everything is on the phone, where like, that's why people get so stuck because they're so used to like, at my hand, I could scroll yep. and get that instant gratification, that instant yep. like fix. I really want to cultivate going back to when like we used to be outside and we used mm-hmm. to do things and- find the uh, the the sensation or the satisfaction through like activities and interacting with people. Um, but it's a journey and, you know, no yep. shade to anyone that just loves scrolling. Cause again, I'm one that will sit on my couch and scroll for hours, Yeah. but in healing myself and in, in going through this breakup and going through this next chapter of my life, I really want to start incorporating and, and creating new habits and creating new things that I can like, really expand myself with and learn again, learn more about me and really like learn me so that when I do meet the next person or I, I, or I get into the next relationship, I do feel that I am whole Mm -hmm. and complete on my own. And I'm just now getting into another relationship or with a person in a partnership where we both are complete and we are okay being alone, but we are even better together, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah, girl. You also mentioned in your Instagram video that boundaries are super important. And we've talked about boundaries on the podcast and they are everything. (laughs) Healthy boundaries are literally everything. So reflecting on your last relationship, what lesson did you learn about yourself? What is something that you learned about yourself through that last relationship and have your non-negotiables evolved or deepened? Great question. Um, for the first part about what I learned as far as like boundaries is that I didn't have any. Mm. I said I had some, but I didn't I didn't stand on business. Yeah. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. I did not. I would allow I did not keep allowing people to 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 cross those lines and then not do anything about it or I would just let it go or be like, oh, it doesn't really matter. But it does because people will treat you how you allow them to. Exactly. And I can't put boundaries on anyone else, but I can have boundaries for myself and stand up for myself. So it's it taught me to now vocalize things that I don't enjoy or that have crossed the boundary for me of course, do it in an effective way that that person can receive it. Yeah. Um, But it's taught me to really stand up for myself and to really voice, voice it. You know, there's one thing to say, oh yeah, I I don't like when someone, you know, yells at me, right? But there's another thing where you just continue to let it happen and you don't say anything about it. But it taught me that like, if I, you know, communicate to someone, hey, this is a boundary where I just don't like, someone yelling at me I'd rather you talk to me in a tone this way and then once they do that and after they've already heard me say don't do that and they keep doing it so then now remove myself or have a consequence to it because like with the boundary you have it set 
But if you don't have action behind it, or I wouldn't say a consequence, but if you don't do anything once someone crosses it and you don't show them that that's definitely unacceptable, then they're going to continue doing it to you. Um, and that's something that in my relationship, I felt my partner had better handle on that. And that's something I'm grateful to have learned from them. You know, regardless of them crossing mine, I learned that they were someone that was very like, don't cross these boundaries. And I had to respect that. And it mm -hmm. showed me, oh, wow, I can learn how to voice my opinion, voice how I feel, but do it in a way that he can receive it and I can receive it. Um, but I used to be scared that, you know, yeah. if I, if I would say something that maybe they won't like me anymore, or maybe they'll think I'm too, you know, restrictive or whatever I was thinking in my head. And I wasn't allowing them to prove me wrong. I was just already saying, well, they're going to get mad if I do that. So I'm not going to do it. Instead of being like, well, if they care about me and if they respect me, then they'll listen to what I have to say. So definitely speaking up. And what was the second question? I'm sorry. Has your, have your non-negotiables deepened or evolved in any way? Oh my gosh. They definitely deepened. They definitely evolved. Um, you know, a few situations happened within that relationship that prior to me even getting into that relationship, I always said, like, if this ever happened between me and a partner, I don't think I would ever want to continue, you know, a relationship with them. And when those things occurred, I found myself still in the relationship oh, and not leaving. Yeah. And I, I don't know if it was a, a fear or if it was kind of like, I couldn't believe this happened to me. Mm -hmm. But what it taught me is that like, if I do make these promises to myself or these things that I'm like, I will not tolerate just for my own happiness, then I have to stick behind them. Because even though I allowed them to happen, I didn't say anything. I was still miserable. I was upset afterwards. I never really truly forgave them fully for it. Um, and instead of removing myself from the situation, I thought I could continue on. So it, it also hurt my relationship because I had these non-negotiables. I said, I'm never going to deal with that. And then I did, but I couldn't get past it because it was like my non-negotiables. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it, it even further, not only hurt me, but it hurt my, my situation with them because I could never get past what they did. I couldn't forgive them for it. Yeah. So it definitely deepened and it, and it evolved to a place where it's like, once you do that, I have to leave yeah. for my own mental health, yeah. my own feelings. Um, and again, you have to show people that they can't treat you that way. Yeah. I, same for me, I think it's hard, especially in relationship, it's hard to have a non-negotiable for your relationship that you haven't experienced and expect yourself to 100% without a shadow of a doubt, stand on business every single time. Yeah. It is very hard. Um, one of my non-negotiables is that I have to be with a man who loves God, has a relationship with God, and is a God-fearing Christian man. Mm. I have not st stood on business in that <laughs> aspect all the time. and But now that I have been in situations where I have been, you know, on the fence about it or lukewarm in that aspect... Now I, I, what I've realized is that as soon as I know that that isn't you, the mask com comes up. Like, I don't, I don't see you in that way anymore. And it's not that I have anything against you. It's just that I know that's not what I want. And I am too old to be trying to change anybody. That's not, mm -hmm. that's not what I'm here for. I'm not here to change you, you know, um, because I've been in situations where I'm trying to change and I'm trying to mold and, you know, mm. I pick up a lot of project men and I treat them <laughs> as a project. And, um, I just know from my experience, I'm not in a space where I am even open to being in a situation where that man isn't a Christian first and foremost, because we won't be equally mm. yoked, you know, and, I just, I know for me personally, that's just not something that I want to do. Um, so yeah, I would say my, my non-negotiables have definitely more so 
I would say deepened. They have evolved just a tiny bit, but I even have like a list in my phone that has been there literally since probably like 2016. And I've realized mm -hmm. that I haven't really changed much in what I want out of a relationship. But these days I am a lot more bold in those choices. And I say stuff up front. You also mentioned like, um, when you're stating your boundaries, sometimes you, you would feel like, oh my gosh, what if they don't like me anymore? I felt the same way, but literally last night when I was in the bed, I was just reflecting on like past relationships and things like that. And I was like, it's time for me to say it with my whole chest at this point, because I'm, I'm done wasting time. Mm -hmm. I would definitely sugarcoat things and, um, tiptoe around my own boundaries. And all that's doing is delaying the inevitable. Um, in my relationship that I had when I was moved, when I moved out to California back in 2018, I literally said to myself, before we even moved out here, I'm not gonna marry this man. I was in my apartment and he was in the room and he said something that just was, that was very off-putting to me. And I did not, say anything to him in my head I just said I'm not gonna marry him why didn't I leave that man where he was I did not have strong enough boundaries I did not want to start over I mm -hmm. honestly did not love myself enough to just nip that in the bud because like I said we were only together for a couple of months before I moved out here and I was literally sitting there saying I'm not gonna marry you but then I turned around and moved out to California with you and spent four years of my life with you and got dug myself into a deeper hole when all along I shouldn't have been wasting his time because that's not fair if I knew mm -hmm. that I did not want to be be there and when you know something like that, it starts to breed resentment. You start to feel all of these things that you should not be feeling in relationship. You stop acting like a partner, all of the things. And it was because I was afraid to start over and I did not have strong boundaries and I did not love myself enough to just nip it all in the bud um, from the jump. So non-negotiables are important. Healthy boundaries are even yes. more important um, as a whole, not just in relationship. And we have to, we have to take time to sit and figure out what that looks like for us. And you said something that was very important. Um, you said something about loving yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's another key to setting boundaries is actually, you have to love yourself in order to even stand on business with your boundaries yeah. to even like implement them. Because if you do love yourself, you're going to stay true to yourself. And honestly, in this relationship, I didn't love myself fully. I didn't. I mm -hmm. really didn't like myself. And I thought that like being with someone, I would learn to do that or they would put enough love into me that I would feel it. But I didn't love myself. And so I wasn't able to stand up for myself. I felt like I didn't feel good about who I was. And I think that's a big thing about setting your boundaries is you have to love yourself. You have to. And, um, I don't know. I just, I, 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 I'm, I'm very appreciative to, to that relationship too, though, because it, it highlighted how much I didn't love myself. And even though my partner was great about even like saying, Hey, I noticed that you doesn't seem like you love yourself. He reminded me of that, which is really beautiful of him. You know, he's like, I, I can tell. I had to see it for myself. Yeah. And, and now that I'm actually spending time with myself and finding the love within myself, I know that like these boundaries that I, I have will now be like, and one of them is, is really having a close knit relationship with your family. Mm -hmm. That's really important to me because I have such a close relationship with my family. And unfortunately, like my, my last partner did it. And you know, that, that's a huge boundary. That's a huge thing that I set that I want my person to, to have that. Mm -hmm. And I know that's going forward. Now that I'm loving myself, I will make sure that my partner does. Okay. So after there's so much advice that people like to give after a breakup, can you tell me any advice that you have ever, whether you've received it or you've seen on social media that, has just been not so great advice for post breakup. And in contrast to that, can you give a better piece of advice 
relating to that bad piece of advice. Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. You actually oh, gave, no, no. Enough, you gave a piece of advice. The best way to get from under somebody oh. is to get up under. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I've but always heard say, of that. And it's not right. good. It's not good. It's, not. It's, not. It's, it's horrible, but say what you were about to say. Sorry. Yeah. That's one. I also feel like there's no such thing as closure. Mm. You don't need to meet up with your ex to find closure. That's just continuing to reopen and reopen wounds. I think closure is not even something to aspire to have. Like I don't aspire to have closure with a partner. I I aspire to like take everything that I experienced with that partner and like learn from it and use it going forward. Because essentially when you are with someone, they're like a mirror to you and they showcase things that you need to work on, things that you need to like figure out in your own life. And honestly, I, I don't hate my partner, my ex. I don't hate them at all. I, I wish them well. I, I hope they have a beautiful life and hopefully eventually we might be able to, you know, chat or speak again. But I think once something is over, realizing that and knowing that it's not it's not your fault. It's not their fault. It's just, this was just not a good alignment. Mm -hmm. And like everything in life, nothing is permanent. Nothing besides permanent marker. That's the only thing yeah. in this life that's <laughs> permanent, <laughs> you know? So going into relationship, I told myself, I'm going to start just going in it and just being in the moment and not already planning my future. So when it does happen, you're just like, okay, it's run its course. We're good. We can part ways. We don't need to rehash it. Let me go to my place and figure things out and let you go and heal from it. And then hopefully if we ever interact, then we're good. Because I've tried closure before. And when I tell you closure happened to me, start sleeping with that person again, mm -hmm. going back into that little hamster wheel of blaming each other. And why did you do that? And it, it doesn't turn out well because you're already still wounded you probably haven't fully healed. The emotions are still there. I think it's just best to like part ways and let it be. I love I love that you brought up closure because that's that's also my answer to this this question. Um my one okay, so when I lived on the East Coast, I had mm -hmm. a boyfriend that I literally moved out there for. I had a Long story short, I did the National Student Exchange Program. I met this guy, fell in love with him, graduated school early, moved back to New Jersey. But we broke up and I literally could not move forward. And this isn't so much bad advice, but um, to piggyback off the closure thing, I was talking to my line sister one day and I was just telling her, I just need closure. It just happened so suddenly. I don't know what's going on. And she gave me an analogy that has literally stuck with me since then. Expecting, well, the, the advice in it is closure comes from within because mm -hmm. it has nothing, it has nothing to do with the other person doing anything. And I think that's what people like to say to people, like get closure or whatever. But she was saying, imagine your front door sitting wide open and you are literally expecting somebody else to come over there and close your front mm. door. And I said, girl, you right, you right, you <laughs> right. How dare me expect somebody else to come close my front door? It's my job to close my front door. It's my job to close that chapter of my life. It's my job to make sure that closure, if I need it, has happened, right? And once I started to think about it like that, I took the steps that I needed to let go, let go of the anger, the hurt, the confusion, the, the past, because our relationship had ended, even though I didn't want it to. And move forward mm -hmm. in that. Yeah. And I think uh, for people out there who do want closure, just know that it it's it literally comes from within. It has nothing to do with you going, sitting down and talking to the other person or whatever it may be. It comes from within. Uh, your line sister is a very wise woman. Because she that's is, exactly, right? That's a great analogy. That's a really <laughs> great. I'm going to put that right here. Right? 
um, because like, like you said, you can't expect other people to help heal you. You have to do it yourself. And I'm speaking from experience. Like I, I broke up with my ex last year mm -hmm. and we've been dealing with the whole, you know, talking it through and trying to figure it out. And, and all we did was blame each other. We didn't heal from the hurt. We just kept, you know, putting a bandaid over a, like a huge wound. It wasn't, and we had to just feel it, finally we just release each other, right? And be like, you know what? I release you. Allow you to go heal on your own. Allow me to go heal on my own. Who knows what the future can hold? You know, I don't know. But it's 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 where we're, we're at. We're at this point for a reason. And instead of just trying to like, okay, let me talk to you and figure out why it happened. You know why it happened. We just don't want to accept it. Yeah. By the time you break up with someone, you know why. Yeah. You do. You know why in your gut. Because clearly you got to this point because y'all are not either aligned. Someone is like still har harboring past trauma. You're har you know, mm -hmm. it's a lot. And, you know, communication is a big thing too with that. So like you said, closure is it's not a real thing, you know, or it, it's not a real thing when you have to rely on someone else to help you provide yeah. that. It's a real thing when you provide it for yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm closing it up, I'm closing my door right now. I'm and yeah. I'm, it's locked. It's locked yeah. right now. Come on. Click, Bottom click. lock, top lock, click, and click. little. <laughs> I'm closing that peephole. <laughs> like everything. Right now, yes. I need time to just be in my own space and my own happiness and my own home and really like healing and working on the things that I need to. And then soon I'll unlock the door. I'll just keep the, the bottom lock locked, you know, mm -hmm. little by little it's, it takes steps. So yeah, I'm glad we ran out on the same wave paint, yeah. but I love that little analogy. I love right? that. That's a really Literally good it, one. it stuck with me my whole life. Like since, <laughs> since then, since 2016, her name is India. India, I know you be watching the podcast. Shout out girl, India. Thank you. Hey, right. Girl. Shout out India for giving me that piece of advice. Uh-oh, guys, you know what time it is. It is time for our fun closing segment. And today, Noelle and I are going to play I Beg to Differ, where we share our hot takes and unpopular opinions on things that's happening in the world, current events, trending things, and pop culture. So with that being said, what's your unpopular opinion, Noelle? <laughs> oh. I'm trying to remember there's people who are stands out there, so I might not say something. Yeah. I'm not I'm not trying to no. get <laughs> okay. Let, let my... us know. What's your hot take? <sighs> Stand culture should be eliminated. Ooh, talk about it. Should. It. You know, I, I you're probably up to date with the recent events on what's going on with some female rappers right now oh yes I've seen a here's the thing about me and I guess this is a hot take in itself <laughs> I don't like keeping up with all of that stuff because it ain't got nothing to do with me it don't oh. have nothing to do with me it don't have nothing to do with me and that's literally all I feel about it but yes I mm -hmm. I know what you're talking about um you talk about Nicki Minaj and Meg the, Megan Thee Stallion yes I yeah. I love both of them like I'm a mm -hmm. I'm a fan on both so I can't speak to them as individual you know yeah and their music's great but I feel like there's a particular type of person that becomes a stan as opposed yeah. to a fan mm -hmm. where it goes left. Yeah. And it's, I, and that should be a study. Like people are not all there. I think that, and I think it happens not just with celebrities, but even like influencers and stuff, they did, they develop this parasocial relationship and they think mm -hmm. that they actually know you. They think that, you know, that that's where the, I feel like that's where the I'm a ride with you to the end thing comes from when they're standing you. I think mm -hmm. it's a, I think it's a parasocial relationship, but I'm not a mental health professional, so I can't diagnose that, but I feel like it, it may have something, something to do with that. So I, I agree. I think, I think all of that stuff should go, to be honest. I'm sorry, y'all. I don't, I'm not a part of the the beehive and all. I love Beyonce, love for music and all that type of stuff, but that's just it. I'm not going to call myself a part of the beehive. I'm not going to say that I am. I don't even know what other people call their like 
st- p- f- fans. I don't even know what to call them, but you know, oh, yeah, you be our- you be really out of it. I, okay, yes. I appreciate. I respect that because, like, I mean, it's because it's too it can much. Be a lot. It's it, negative. Yeah, it, it can be toxic. It, it's too and you much. Need to protect for me. your peace. Yeah, I don't. It's like okay, I'll listen to your music, and that's mm-hmm. it. I'm not going to get into uh, all of the rest of the stuff, and I definitely don't have a stance on anything that's going on because it ain't got nothing to do with Tyra. Fast. And that's it. And and having a stance on it isn't doing anything for me. So I just I just think it's a it's a waste of time for people, especially fans and stuff, to be going back and forth with one another. I have seen like yes. a little bit of that. Like it's like y'all, y'all don't even know these people. Like, they don't know all. you. They, they don't, don't know. I mean, they don't really know you. Then they're they don't really care. I, I wouldn't say they don't care because I mean I feel like they care about their fans. They, but they like, care in a blanketed way. Like they yes. don't care about Tyra Gabrielle Morrison who live in Los Angeles. <laughs> they don't know me. They do yeah. not know me. They it's wish like, why me you well, have to, but <laughs> you don't have to act like that. You don't have to be so rude or mean in defense of your favorite artists. Yeah. You yep. know, it's like that it's relax. Mm-hmm. That part. Ooh, my hot take. Do I have one right now besides that? I think I have a lot of them. Um, but I can't think of one right now. I should have wrote one down because I knew he was playing this game. Um what about do you do you notice like people um when they are scrolling and they see something that doesn't really apply to who they are, they still have to have an opinion about it? Oh. And you're like, have you heard of the bean soup theory? The bean soup theory. What is that? Yes. So there was this video on TikTok. This girl made a recipe of bean soup. Mm-hmm. Okay. She's like, if, if you like beans, here's a soup recipe of bean uh-huh. soup. Let me tell you, people were in her comments being like, well, what if I don't like beans? Or I can't eat beans. I can't. And it's like, okay. if it don't apply, let it fly. And why are you? Girl, <laughs> see this. And, and, and that's the thing. Like this makes my back itch because (laughs) I people I guess my hot take would be yeah I don't care about sharing my opinion on the internet (laughs) because for what first of all too many people are keyboard warriors too many people are an expert in the field too many people think their opinion matters when it don't I'm sorry, it don't. Especially if you are commenting on a uh, like a content creator's recipe. Girl, boy, y'all, sit down, leave me alone. Like, stop. Like, it, it it it's becoming way too much. It's becoming a very toxic place, and people are very opinionated. And it literally, yes, that's that's my that's my hot take. It literally gets under my skin. I don't care about your opinion. I'm sorry. I don't especially on something that I have created myself like a recipe or any art that I put out there and a lot of people like to say well you put it out there so you're subjecting this to this okay but you don't have to be a (laughs) you don't have to you do not have to be a b word you don't No. You don't have to be that. You don't have to share. And, the, and that's the thing. It's, it's a difference between having an opinion in a, like a, a neutral way, but people like to say their opinions in hurtful ways these days. Mm-hmm. And they say, well, that's just my opinion. No, you're being hurtful and you have an opinion. It's not, it's not the same thing. So no, I don't like none of that. And I know the more that I grow and that's why I love the podcast because there's not any comments under a podcast episode, right? But like my YouTube and my Instagram and all of that, people get blocked left and right because play, (laughs) don't play with me, play with your mammy. (laughs) And I'm just going to have to leave it at that. I love that. Yes. Don't play with her. Do not play with Tyra. We don't play those games over here. You will get uh -uh, blocked. Yes. Yes. Because who cares if you don't like beans then substitute it there's no reason for like what substitute it go ahead and Look, do do your own thing like it's come a on. it's a bad thing people always feel like things have to apply to them everything yes. has to like apply no it doesn't not everything's meant for you mm-hmm. and that's okay that's what's beautiful about this world not we're not all the same so yeah. like go make yourself a chicken soup or something else right like, i see i see a lot of this particular uh thing with like parenting t- 
TikToks and Instagram mm-hmm. and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't speak on it because I'm not a parent, but when I read those comments, I'm just like, y'all are the densest people I've ever met or haven't met. Y'all are the densest people I've ever seen on in life because why are you commenting this having such a strong opinion on a 15 second video everybody know everything they need to know in 15 seconds and Clearly. it's it's the it's the craziest thing i don't comment on videos for or like any content for real on anything unless it's like something that is supposed to be neutral like Ooh, which the bean soup thing, obviously it's not, you know, but I try to, I only comment on things that are pretty much neutral. And if I have like a negative opinion on something, I keep it to myself or I'm sending it in my group chat with my friends. I don't ha- like it. It literally don't matter that I have this opinion. I could talk about this all no. day. That's it. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Cause my opinion doesn't matter. And yours does not either. Not under my grilled cheese post what exactly (laughs) it's like and if you have a different opinion than me you could present it in a way that's not going to be like you said hurtful it's like everyone has an opinion doesn't mean it's fact no it's your fact but doesn't mean it's mine and we can agree in a civil manner we don't have to go back and forth with like slurs and well you're an idiot it's like wait what right it gets crazy (laughs) and here's the thing know where your we we going on a tangent know where your opinion should be and if you have an opinion on something that don't need an opinion form it formulate it as a suggestion for example the grilled cheese thing hey y'all i used american cheese girl you should have used swiss cheese like you like you know what i mean like people will literally swiss cheese is better you should how dare you use american people go hard behind the crazy stuff i've gotten so many crazy because you know i do food content I've gotten yeah. crazy comments under my food videos and I want to say come to my house and fight me because what is wrong <laughs> with you <laughs> what is wrong with you like literally <laughs> like why are you commenting on this drink that I made please leave me alone like people whatever anyways but yeah like sometimes <laughs> an opinion is literally unnecessary like it in that regard I don't your opinion doesn't matter because I'm giving you a recipe so if you don't like the recipe just keep scrolling block me do something you can that's the easiest (laughs) thing I feel like it takes more to be angry than it is to just keep moving and literally about your day literally that hot air we was talking about earlier like you just harboring all this hot gas you're gonna float off stop playing look (laughs) you gotta go to yoga get that energy out go hit something Oh don't come God. under my comments. Don't come under Tyra's comments. Y'all hear You're that? Not. Don't come I, under her comments. I don't have the time of day. Noel, this was so fun. I am so glad that you came on the podcast to chat it up. Thank you for being open and vulnerable and sharing a little bit of your story. I know that somebody, a lot of people are going to really resonate with what we talked about today. So thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me and thank you to everyone watching and listening. Hopefully I brought some new perspective or maybe you agree with what I'm saying, but hopefully yeah. like it could help you start like just learning more about yourself um, and bringing more love into this world. We are in a, such a chaotic time, but it's so beautiful. And I hope that we can uh, continue having the conversation beyond here and yeah thank you for having me again (laughs) yeah of course and where can if anyone wants to where can where can everyone follow you uh you can follow me on instagram tiktok and twitter um i have the same username or you know at name at it's called no no and that's spelled n-o-e-n-e-a-u-x again it's on instagram twitter and tiktok And I'll also link it down below in the show notes for you guys. (laughs) But thank you again so much. This was so fun. Yay. It was. Thank you so much. And thank you for being my first podcast. Yeah. (laughs) Forgiveness is a choice. Healing is a choice. And through this journey of healing and navigating a breakup, we learn just how important those choices are. As I said to Noelle, it took one of my close friends to say to me that closure was a choice and it had everything to do with me and not the other person for me to choose to close that door. Remember, we aren't defined by our past, but by how we choose to move forward. Do we hold a grudge? Do we walk around with our mouth poked out? 
Do we talk down on anyone involved or do we choose to pour into us? Now, I'm not saying to forget what has happened. I think reflection and taking inventory of past experiences is the way to go. But forgiveness is for you. Closure is for you. Think of these two ideas as release. Releasing what no longer serves you. Trust me, in my mind, that's the only thing that makes it slightly easier to forgive because I'll be the first to say it can take a while and it can be difficult. So I want to leave you with this. Embrace your resilience, honor your growth and trust in the process of healing. There is more out there for you and this is not the end of your story. As long as you are on the wake up list every morning, God got you. Thank you guys so much for listening. That is all that I have for you today. Please join us again next week for another episode of the pod. And before you get out of here, please subscribe to the podcast. If you haven't already rate us and leave us a review and follow us on all of our social media at affirmations for black girls. And most importantly, if you are watching on YouTube right now, hello, and thank you for being here. Make sure you subscribe for more video content just like this. And that's all I have for you. This is Affirmations for Black Girls.